Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store. Today we're talking about two new cameras from Canon, the G7X Mark III. As well as the G5X Mark II. Now both these cameras were announced at the same time. They have a lot of similarities, but some differences as well. Let's get into it. When you first look at both these cameras, they do seem very similar. The resolution of these cameras is both 20 megapixels and they have a one inch stacked CMOS sensor. Now this is really interesting for Canon because before this, we've only seen the stacked CMOS sensor in Sony cameras. Yeah, now physically both these cameras look very similar. In fact, I keep having to look down and say, which camera do I have in my hands? <laughs> Dave holds it up to his <laughs> face like this so you can see, it's so tiny. But they both incorporate a really nice grip that's part of the camera. It's not an additional accessory you have to buy with certain other brands out there. Yeah, it's nice that it's incorporated into the camera and it gives it a really substantial feel. We still put on the wrist straps just for extra <laughs> safety, but I feel like I could really just walk around with this camera and I'm not going to drop it. The other nice thing is that the buttons and the dials are laid out the same way and I really like how intuitive it is. Yeah, it is a very intuitive camera. Okay, so Evelyn, it's important when you look at a camera for you doing selfies, you look at the lens, not the screen. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, selfie expert Dave. I, I love sure my selfies. <laughs> um, both these cameras do have this great articulating screen, which is very well built and very robust, and it's great for doing vlogging and it's great for doing selfies, but also if you're doing a low angle shot or a high angle shot above a crowd, this works great. Yeah, now there's a few things that are more disadvantages with the similarities between the cameras. Both are missing a hot shoe. Yes, but they both have a little pop-up flash, which is very handy in certain situations. Yes, and the other thing is they both have a USB-C port, but don't be fooled. This USB-C port is good for data transfer and you can charge and power the camera. However, you do have to buy Canon's extra power adapter. Now we did find that you can charge the camera if you have a MacBook Pro power supply plugged in with USB-C cable and so that will work, but don't be fooled. When you see that USB-C power spec, you're not actually able to just plug it into your car or your laptop and get a direct charge. No, that would have been very handy. Both cameras use the NB13L battery from Canon, which isn't an exceptionally big battery. You're going to get between two to 300 shots depending on how you use your camera, so be prepared for that. We've talked a lot about the similarities between the two cameras, but it's the differences that actually make these cameras targeted at two completely different users. So the G5X Mark II is the more photocentric camera, and that's for two primary reasons. One of them is they've actually put in a new lens that has a tiny bit more reach. So it's a five times zoom versus a 4.2 times zoom. And that gives you the equivalent of 24 millimeters to 120 millimeters, giving you that extra 20 millimeter reach versus the G7X Mark III. Now, the other main difference is the electronic viewfinder. So the G5X Mark II has this little pop-up electronic viewfinder that's quite nice. So you just pop it up and pull it out to activate a 2.36 million dot EVF that has 120 frame per second refresh rate. And what that means is that it's able to keep up with the action and you're getting a fairly clear picture through that electronic viewfinder. The only complaint that I have is that the Sony system, the older RX100 series compact cameras used to use the same pop and pull out feature. Now they just have the one touch button, which is just a lot nicer and a little bit more evolved. This feels a little bit older in terms of how you actually get it to work. But when you look through the viewfinder, it's very nice. And I love having an electronic viewfinder for photography. I find that if you just have the screen, like on the G7X Mark III, I, I really do miss that viewfinder. If the G5X Mark II is the more photocentric camera of these two, the G7X Mark III is more video centric. Now right off the bat we have features like a built-in microphone jack and I really like this. The integrated microphone in the camera is perfectly adequate but the audio quality isn't stellar. The ability to add a lav microphone or a shotgun microphone is certainly going to help you out significantly with the audio quality. All right, this is a test of the G7X Mark III's internal microphone and it probably doesn't sound great. All right, this is the G7X Mark III with the DD V mic D3 plugged into the camera. What do you think the audio sounds like here? 
Now we do not have a hot shoe to plug a microphone directly onto it physically, so you have to come up with some kind of rig or a cage to make it work like that, but it's well worth the effort. Now, we don't have a headphone jack, that's one thing I would kind of complain about this, so I can't monitor my audio if I'm doing anything with that. A very cool feature with the G7X Mark III is the ability to live stream video directly to YouTube. Now, once you set it up through a computer or a phone, you don't need those devices anymore because you can go directly from the camera to YouTube. Now, we did find you needed a very strong Wi-Fi connection to make this work. We found the whole process of setting up for live streaming through YouTube rather cumbersome, and I would like to see that whole process much more streamlined. Now, the G7X Mark III has a few features that make it a little more video-centric, but they both share very similar video specifications. They do. We have 4K 30p, and that's uncropped. It also can shoot 120 frames per second in the full HD mode. Now, I know you had a lot of fun with the slow motion. I sure did. <laughs> and of course, this is a huge improvement over the 60p maximum that was on the previous models in full HD. And so it is nice to be able to get that slow-mo, super dramatic action shot. Now, the autofocus during video is adequate, but I'd really like to see them implement their dual pixel autofocus system, which we see in all their mirrorless cameras and in their SLR cameras now. Yeah, so both photo and video employs a contrast detect autofocus system, and this is not the best of the best of what Canon can offer. Their dual pixel autofocus system, particularly for video, is excellent. And because these are Canon's premium point and shoot cameras, we'd really like to see them take the same kind of direction that Sony is doing by putting in their top technology across their entire lineup. Now, with Sony, the RX100 Mark 7 has set the bar in terms of autofocus Big performance, time. and it's kind of this unachievable <laughs> standard it seems for any other brand right now and although these two Canon cameras they can focus decently there's a little bit of hesitation to it and that contrast detect autofocus system is just not the same as phase detect. Now, although these cameras do not acquire autofocus as quick as some other cameras on the market, they are very usable. I have no trouble at all acquiring focus when I'm shooting portraits or doing macro or anything like that. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with the little bumblebee macro shots we were able to get. Yeah. They looked really, really nice, very sharp. And the closest focusing distance that you can get is five centimeters at the wide end. And that's pretty impressive. And I don't think I'd want to get much closer than that for shooting bumblebees. And if you are someone that's capturing action, they've made some huge improvements there. One of them is with the <laughs> G5X in RAW, you could only shoot at 1.1 frames per second. Now with both of these cameras, you can shoot eight frames per second in RAW if you want autofocus. And if you're locking off your autofocus as well as exposure, you can actually shoot up to 20 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and up to 30 frames per second using the electronic shutter. Now this is very handy if you find yourself in a situation where you want to capture a burst of action. I love it. Yeah, and Dave got some really nice kayak shots and you got a really nice sequence and if you're someone that wanted to sort of get that shot where you pre-anticipate the mm. action you can actually do a pre-burst mode that will give you up to 15 frames or about half a second before the action actually happens and so if you want to get that micro expression or that decisive moment uh, this is really handy. We are impressed with the image quality we're getting out of these cameras with the lenses and the sensors matched together the image quality is really nice the G5X Mark II does have the newer generation lens and we are finding it is a little bit sharper than the G7X Mark III. Yeah, but with that all in mind, I mean, Canon always does such a nice job processing the images, and so the JPEGs out of camera are really nice. We love the color, we like the look of them, and the RAW files are really nice to work with as well. They have good dynamic range, and image quality for a point-and-shoot camera is quite impressive. Both cameras feature image stabilization, which is great for helping with camera shake. Yeah, and so if your images are sharp and crisp and don't have any blur to them from camera shake, you're going to be more likely to want to enlarge them and print them. Mm -hmm. And I actually printed some samples um, from our holiday for my in-laws, and I was really amazed with the image quality. There was a couple in there that I actually questioned whether or not I actually shot it with one of these cameras. <laughs> but the 20 megapixels processed, whether you're shooting with RAW or you have the JPEG right out of camera, I was really impressed with the look of them. Overall, I have to say that both these cameras are really fun to shoot with and I think one of the main reasons is because their interface and menu system is so easy to navigate and I love how you can actually use the touch screen to navigate through the menu. I know, that is a really nice touch, Sony. Uh <laughs> <laughs> 
And of course, all of the tactile controls are really nice too. The dials feel really good, the layout is nice, and I just think that all of the placement of everything is really well positioned. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know anything about photography or cameras, putting it on full auto, you're gonna yield some really nice results. But if you want to explore that a little bit more, you have all these options. You can go in the full manual, of course, the ND filter, and the frames per second. You can really manipulate this camera to get some great results. Yeah, and on the video side of things, both have really solid specs, and then you just have to decide between these two cameras which one is going to be more important for you now because Canon makes it a little bit confusing the <laughs> G7X Mark III is actually the less expensive model by about $200 in Canada the G5X Mark II is the $200 more and that's because you get the EVF and the newer lens yeah now I really like the EVF and for me that's a more valuable feature than the live vlogging kind of functionality of this camera yeah and that's because we're both photographers in our day-to-day -day lives and so having that EVF is really important to us but if you're someone that does more video projects but you also want something that does nice photos the G7X Mark III is a really good option for getting the best of both worlds at a more affordable price point. Yeah, I think Canon done a very good job on both of these cameras. Now, they're not the most premium cameras on the market. I think Sony's got that under wraps right now, but these are really viable options. Yeah, for the price point, you're getting really good quality. And although Canon hasn't put in their best possible technology in them, they've put in a lot of really nice features that make them fun cameras to use for both photo and video. So we wanna know, which camera are you more excited about? Is it the more photo-centric G5X Mark II? Or the more video-centric G7X Mark III? Let us know by commenting below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and hit that notification button so we can catch you again very soon. Look, I'm getting no. surrounded by no. you guys. No, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> we have our very own little Cinderella! <laughs>